Okay, guys, this is worksheet two, identifying and balancing equations. First, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the type of reactions. Remember, our types of reactions are, one, we have synthesis, two, decomposition, three, Single replacement. And four, double displacement. Those are our four basic types of reactions. So types of chemical reactions. This uh, paper is available for you on Google Classroom. But synthesis is where we have two or more elements combined to form a single product. Synthesis, we are making something. And you see, boy, girl, boy and girl. All right. Decomposition is just the opposite. This is where we have a single compound and it is broken down into the elements or simpler compounds that it's made of. In synthesis, you have one product. In decomposition, you have one reactant. Single replacement. In single replacement, what we see here is we have a single element and we have a compound. Well, this single element, if it is more reactive than the other element in there, in this case, if we think of boys as metals, if metal A is more reactive than metal B, then metal A will replace B in the compound. So someone's single, and someone gets replaced. Double displacement. Okay, this is where we have two compounds in the reactants and two compounds in the products. And basically, they switch. The metals switch with the nonmetals. As you can see here, we have A dancing with B, and C is dancing with D. Then we have a reaction occur, and we have... B and C together, and A and D together. And that's double displacement. So when we look at number one, we can see that we have one product. Two elements come together to make one product. That is going to be synthesis. Okay, on number two, notice we have one reactant that is broken down into simpler compounds and elements. That is going to be a decomposition. Now number three, it looks like a single replacement, and in a way it is, but the oxygen comes over here. So I'm gonna call this one a single, because we have a single element and a compound, so this one is going to be single replacement. Okay, number four, single element, compound, single element and a compound. Zinc replaces hydrogen in the compound. So this is also single replacement. Here, on number five, we have a compound, and the single element is a nonmetal. So chlorine is more reactive than iodine. Chlorine is going to replace the iodine. This is also a single replacement. On number six, we have two reactants and one product. This is a Synthesis, we are creating something here. Number seven, we have two compounds in the reactants and two compounds in the products. As you see, barium and hydrogen, basically they switch dance partners and this is a double displacement. And last, we have number eight. And this one here is going to be a single 
replacement and my daughter's home. Okay, so now we are going to balance these equations. And here are the steps to balancing equation. Number one, list. Number two, count. Number three, coefficients. Let me explain. Number one, list. We're gonna list all of the elements and or ions involved in the equation below the arrow. Number two, count. We're gonna count how many of each element or ion is in the reactants and in the products. Pay attention to those subscripts. And three, we're gonna use coefficients to change the numbers such that they are equal in the products and the reactants. So list, count, coefficients. Okay, so here's how it works. List, in this equation we have phosphorus and we have oxygen. So we're gonna put a P and an O. We're gonna put a blank over here and a blank over here, blank over there and a blank over there. That's so we can count how many of those elements are on that side of the equation. All right. Now let's look at this. On the reactant side, we have four phosphorus atoms. On the product side, we also have four. That's good, those are balanced, right? Over here, we have two oxygens. And over here, we have 10 oxygens. Okay, so we have listed and we have counted. Now we are going to use coefficients. As we can see, phosphorus is balanced, oxygen is not. So we need to have 10 oxygens over here on the, rea uh, excuse me, on the reactant side. So we're gonna put a coefficient here that is gonna multiply by that two to equal 10. What times two equals 10? That's right. Five. And then when we do that, we now change this to a 10, and we are balanced. Give me a Y. Give me an E. Give me a Q. All right, let's go on to the next one. All right, this is our uh, decomposition reaction of potassium chlorate. Potassium chlorate decomposes to give us potassium chloride and oxygen gas. Okay, so we are going to have potassium, chlorine, and oxygen. Now let's count. Over here, there's no subscript, so this is one potassium. Over here, this is also one potassium. We have one chloride, one chloride, and here we have three oxygens, and over here we have two. Now you can see potassium is balanced, chlorine is balanced, oxygen is not. So this is going to bring up a case I call twos and threes. Anytime you see two and three on each side of the equation, we can't put a subscript here to balance those. So what we have to do is we have to find the least common multiple of two and three, and that is six. So we need to make six oxygens on each side, okay? so. For here, this is easy. We are going to put a number here. That times two equals six. That's right, three. Yes. So we put a three there, and that changes that to six. Now, we need to put a number here that when multiplied by three is going to give us six oxygens. What times three equals six? That's right, two. <laughs> So we put a two there, and that's gonna change this to six. However, this is also going to change the number of potassiums and chlorines. So this is now two, and this is now two. So now our potassiums and chlorines are not balanced, so we need to put a coefficient here to make sure that we're balanced. So we need to have two potassiums and two chlorines. So we put a number two here, and now it is balanced. Well, yeah. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Okay, so here we have iron two 
sorry, iron four sulfide actually, and oxygen, and it's gonna give us iron three oxide and sulfur dioxide. Okay, so let's get to listing here. We're going to have iron and sulfur and oxygen. Now let's start counting. Over here we have one iron. Here we have two irons. We have two sulfurs over here. We have one sulfur over here. And we have two oxygens over here. And over here, we have three oxygens here and two there. So we have a total of five oxygens. This one's gonna be kind of tricky, but when you see something like this where oxygen is by itself, that means we can put a coefficient there and only change the number of oxygens. So we're gonna do oxygens last, okay? So let's start with our irons. We need two irons on the reactant side. So I'm gonna put a two here, and this is going to change to two, but it's also gonna change my sulfurs to four. So now I wanna balance my sulfurs. I need four sulfurs, so I'm gonna put a four here, and this is gonna change this to a four, but this is gonna change this oxygens to eight, and this one to three, and eight plus three, well, that equals 11. So now we have 11 oxygens over here. So you have to think to yourself, what whole number can we put over there times two that will equal 11 oxygens? Well, there isn't one. So we're gonna cheat. What times two equals 11? Well, we know that 5.5 will work. And if we do 5.5, this will give us 11 oxygens over here. Now everything's balanced. However, we have a problem here because we can't have 5.5. This has to be a whole number. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna multiply everything by two. So this is a four, this is 11, this is a two, and this is an eight. And now it's balanced. That's kind of a hard one though. Here's an easy one, number four. Okay, let's list. We have zinc, we have hydrogen, and we have chlorine. Let's count. We have one zinc over here. We have one zinc over here. That looks good. We have one hydrogen over here. We have two over here. That's not balanced. We have one chloride over here, and we have two chlorides over there. So the only thing that's not balanced is the hydrogens and the chlorides. We need to have two over here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a two right here and that's gonna change that to two and that to two and that is balanced. Yes. All right. There we go, on to the next one. Here we have potassium, iodine, and chlorine. Let's count. We have one potassium in the reactants. We have one potassium in the products. We have one iodine in the reactants and two in the products. We have two chlorides in the reactants and one in the products. So we see the iodines and the chlorines are not balanced. So let's start with the iodines. We need two iodines in the reactants. So to do that, we're gonna put a two here. That's gonna change this to two. But that two affects the potassium and the iodine. So this is now also a two. So now our potassiums are not balanced. So we need two, so we put two there. And that's gonna change our potassiums to two. But that is also gonna change our chlorines to two. But guess what? That's what we needed. Yes, 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 yes. So we are balanced. Okay. All right, number six. This one's kind of hard, but I'm gonna show you a little trick here. All right, so we just have sulfur and oxygen. All right, let's count. We have one sulfur over here, and we have one sulfur over here, and we have two plus two. We have four oxygens over here, and we have three over there. Okay, 
This is a little trick I call odds and evens. If we look, there is no whole number we can put in either one of these coefficients that will give us an odd number of oxygens. So in other words, the number of oxygens in the reactants will be an even number. It has to be an even number. So the number of oxygens in the products also has to be an even number. So what's the lowest even number that you know? That's right, two. Yes! All right, so I'm gonna put a two here. That's gonna change my sulfurs to two. And my oxygens, two times three, that's gonna give me six oxygens. Okay, so I need two sulfurs. So I'm going to put a two here. That's gonna change that to two. But look what it does for my uh, number of oxygens. Two times two, there's four here, plus two there. Now I have six and it is balanced. All right, on to the double displacement. On the double displacement, one thing we wanna make sure we're doing is that we don't put the two metals together or the two negative ions together. So here we have barium and hydrogen. I know hydrogen is not a metal, but it's a positive, but we'll think of it as a positive ion. And here's our barium and here's our chloride. So here's chlorine and phosphate. And here's phosphate and here's chlorine. You see how they switch? Here's another thing, when we count, we're gonna count the phosphate ion instead of counting the individual phosphorus and oxygen atoms. It's a lot easier. So we're gonna have barium, chlorine, hydrogen, and phosphate, PO4, okay? Now remember, the four doesn't tell you that there are four phosphates. It says there's four oxygens there, but this here, that is one phosphate, one PO4. Over here we have two PO4s, okay? Over here we have one barium, and over here we have three bariums. Over here we have two chlorine, over here we have one chlorine, over here we have three hydrogens, and over here we have one hydrogen. All right, so we look, and the first one we see not balanced, barium. Our bariums are not balanced. We have three in the products, only one in the reactants. We need three bariums over here. So we're gonna put a three here. And that's gonna change that to three, but that three also affects our chlorines. So now we have three times two. Now we have six chlorines. So now we need six chlorines over here. Well, that's easy. We just put a six right there. That'll change our chlorines to six, but remember that six also affects the hydrogens. So now we have six hydrogens. Now our hydrogens are not balanced. No. Yeah, they're not balanced. All right, so we need six, and there's three there. What times three equals six? That's right, two. Yeah, baby. So we put a two there, and that's gonna give us six hydrogens, but that two is also gonna affect the number of phosphates, and that's gonna change that to two, but guess what? We needed two anyway, yeah. and we are now balanced. Okay, so, oh, also remember, if it's blank, that means it's like a one. You don't have to write ones. All right, last one. We have 10, we have sodium, and we have nitrate. So we're gonna keep the nitrate ion together because there's nitrate here and there's nitrate there. Let's count. We have 110 over here. We have 110 over here. We have one sodium here. We have one, it looks pretty good so far. We have one NO3 here, not three, but we have one nitrate ion. Over here we have two nitrate ions. So we see that the only one that is not balanced is the nitrates. We need two nitrates over there. So if we put a two there, that's gonna change that to two. But remember that two also affects the number of the sodiums. 
So this is going to change to two. So now we need two sodiums, so we put a two over here, and voila, we are balanced. Well, yes. <laughs> All right, so let me know if you have any questions on this worksheet here. Mm -hmm. And that's what it looks like. Good luck.